Uh, hi there, we're going to be doing some remote sensing techniques using ArcGIS today. Uh, so I do have uh, four bands for 2013 Landsat imagery of a particular study area. And uh, I'm going to find band 2 which is blue, band 3 which is green, band 4 which is red and band 5 which is near infrared to be useful for my particular research. Uh, what I want to do today is to show you guys how to make a composite of these four bands uh, to make it a whole mod spectral image whereby we can do all sort of things like land use classification, uh, NDVI for agricultural monitoring and other stuff. Uh, in this video I'm going to just be doing a band composite of the four images and to show you guys how to do different band combinations and finally run an NDVI which stands for Normalized Difference Vegetation Index. I know most of you guys must have heard of it. Uh, it shows uh, the greenness of vegetation or the vigorness of vegetation. So with uh, this kind of uh, index model you can be able to identify areas with uh, high vegetation or uh, high uh, a healthy vegetation in areas that are really really doing very well so you can imagine uh, if you're, you're an agriculturalist or you're a farmer uh, this index model can be very useful in terms of determining uh, areas within your farm that are doing well and areas that aren't and you can actually send the right help to the necessary places and uh, one thing to take note of is the resolution sizes uh, when you're looking at a small scale or just uh, three three thousand hectares or just one thousand hectares you want to consider what kind of resolution of data set you're using anyways uh, so i do have my four bands here and they're all uh, just the digital numbers so this is just what you get from the satellite and uh, band 5 represents uh, the near infrared and uh, vegetation actually reflects highly within this spectral band and we do have the band 4 which is the red and vegetation doesn't uh, reflect that much within this band but we do have things like uh, built up areas and soils to they actually do reflect uh, highly within the red spectrum so what we want to do here is first of all composite these bands and secondly run an NDVI index on this to see what the vegetation within this area is looking like uh, so first of all I can use different ways to do the same procedure but what I like using is the image analysis window if you do not have this you should go to the windows uh, tab here and you have image analysis I do have mine already and I docked it to the side of the screen for more space so what you want to do first is to make sure you do have your bands arranged uh, in a descending order so I have it as two three four and five and what I'll do here is just click on the first band and hold on my shift key and click on the last one and it's highlighted all of them and you do have this uh, icon here it says composite band you can go all through all of them and it gives you a quick note on what a particular button does so this is the composite band and I just click on it and it automatically creates uh, a new composite band as you can see here and I can start playing with the different band combinations uh, I can start off by three two and one which means red green blue which is the actual way we do see things with our naked eyes but the good thing with remote sensing is you can actually do several band combinations and see what's beyond our eyes and when you look into things like the near infrared which is the band four here in this case so if i do four three and uh, two which is the near infrared red and green uh, you see it gives us a kind of color, false color image and the red areas represents vegetation and uh, this blue, uh, blue cyan color here represents a uh, built up areas and um, you could do all sorts of 
band combination to derive different things depending on what you're looking at. If you're looking at uh, things like the moisture content in the leaves, you could want to have a look at the short wave infrared where uh, moisture content do reflect a lot within that spectrum. Uh, so in this case, uh, I do have my band composite, but one thing I don't have is this band composite as my permanent layer. So what this image analysis window does is it just creates a new composite band on the fly and what you need to do is right click on the composite band and go to your data, export data and now you're trying to export it so you can get a permanent file. I'll just uh, send it to the right directory. I want it to go to my default geodatabase. Add and I'll give it a new name. Uh, I'll just leave it at composite. Yeah. Composite and I'll click on save. And it exports it uh, to a permanent layer so I can use it and it's asking me would you like to export to the data frame yes I want to add it to my data frame and I now can just delete this one and go on to the rest click on this one and hold on the shift go down and remove all of them I just like to see my table of contents very neat so I do now have just uh, my composite band here now what I want to do is I want to create an NDVI index model uh, which is going to tell me how the vegetation within the study area is doing. So I want to see areas that do have high vegetation and healthy vegetation go as low as areas without vegetation like bare soil or built up areas and with this model I can be able to integrate it into several other suitability uh, modeling like uh, determining areas, uh, possible areas or potential areas of new farmlands or areas to conserve the forest and stuff like that. Uh, so what I want to do now is to go back to the image analysis window and when you click on the composite image uh, this button's turn on and you see this one with a leaf it says NDVI it has a leaf logo uh, then you click on that and it automatically creates an NDVI but let me quickly talk about the NDVI and how it works so the formula for NDVI is the near infrared minus the red divided by near infrared plus the red so we are taking out what's not visible within the near uh, what's visible within the near infrared spectrum and uh, subtracting that from the red band and dividing it with the uh, addition of both bands and what that does is it takes out uh, the reflectance value from the red band and allows us to see uh, most of the reflectance from the near infrared which is the vegetation in this case so what I want to do here is go on to this little button at the top the options button within the image analysis window and I'm just going to quickly adjust this so I want to tell GIS that my red band is not actually 4 it's 3 and my near infrared is 4 and I'm just going to click onto the scientific output as my output so don't use the wavelength uh, you should click on the scientific output and click on OK and now we are ready to run the NDVI button and I'll just click on the NDVI button and here we do have a nice NDVI which is just color coded in the black and white if I just uh, double click and go into the layer properties and I go to symbology I can be able to do different kind of stuff with this I can uh, so it's saying I cannot classify because I haven't run a histogram on this. The reason why is because my NDVI is not permanent layer. I just it's just there on the fly. I will need to export it just the way I did for the composite band. Uh, but well, I'll do that later. But for now, we could just use the normal stretch, uh, the normal color ramp, to give it some nice color, so we can be able to see patterns within the area. So what this is saying is uh, the areas with the red, maybe this isn't really a good color. Maybe I'll do a continuous color like uh, light green to dark green. So areas of light green are bare soil probably or built up areas as we can see here. And areas uh, with the highest value of 0 0.40 
which are the darkest green, are the areas with the highest vegetation. Now bear in mind, the NDVI is not telling you if it's a forest or if it's a farmland or whatever it is. It's left for the user to determine what he's looking at. So if you know you're looking at a farmland and uh, you, you run an NDVI, so what you expect to see are crops that are growing better than the other ones. And when you're looking at a whole county or a state level or national level, regional level, you you should be uh, expecting to see different kind of vegetation. It could be woodlands, it could be uh, broadleaf forest, it could be some cropland and stuff like that. So not necessarily that the highest vegetation is uh, forest, not necessarily that the highest vegetation is cropland. Uh, and that's it. Uh, so you can do all sort of stuff with that. Keep in mind this is not yet a permanent layer. If you want to keep it permanent, you can just go to data like we did and export data. So thank you very much for watching. If you do like this video, please uh, hit the like button below. Thank you.